All right, so um, I'm gonna go over how to do an outline. And if you create your outline this week, like, like you should, I mean, you should, okay, it's extra credit. Uh, you will submit it here, outline, extra credit. Submit your outline here and get extra credit if it is done how I instruct. If you submit a crappy outline, then uh, you're gonna get crappy extra credit, which isn't much at all, <laughs> okay? If you actually go the distance and do what I've asked you to do, and you submit it the way that I uh, instruct it, okay? Then uh, you can, we'll get higher extra credit, all right? Um, and the due date, uh, the due date can be flexible. I know on the assignment sheet it says uh, uh, the 31st, but like, you know, obviously I have, I'm slacking on, on how many days uh, late I am on this lecture. So you might need some extra days to write your outline, just fine. If you write a really good outline, it will really help you to write your essay, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, a lot of your essays written in, by the outline, so um, you can submit your outline after the thirty first. The idea is that you write your outline first, um, and even if you submit it on a Wednesday, whatever uh, next week, that's fine. Uh, there's no due date for for the uh, for the outline. Okay, so write the outline first, and then uh, submit it whenever you can. Okay. And as long as you do it, you'll get extra credit if it's good. All right, so um, what you are going to do here is you are going to, you are going to open up this outline template right here. You're gonna click on this, all right? And it will look like this, all right? When you open it up, all right? And this is where you are going to type your outline and you will save it and you will, let's see, let me go back to my, here we go. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Okay, good, I am. And you will submit, when you're finished with it, you'll submit it here, the outline extra credit, okay? All right, so for your outline, you will make sure you write your name. It's in, it's in, it's in um, MLA formatting. Title is the title of the book that you read. Okay, so for me, I'm doing We Cast a Shadow. So I'm typing We Cast a Shadow. It's a title of a, of a novel, of a book. So it's in italics, it's not underlined, and it's not in quotation marks, okay? And then I think about my main thesis. What is my book about? What is the main idea of my book? And let's see. The main idea, I've already pre-written this, and so I'm just copy and pasting it to make it seem as if, uh, all right, to do one piece at a time, because I don't want to overload you with like all this filled out at once. So my main idea is this, okay? After reading my book, I know that my author, okay, my main thesis, Maurice Carlos Rufin, who is the author of the book, Maurice Carlos Rufin addresses the issues of race in America by creating a dystopic novel. Well, I guess fine, I'll just do dystopian. Dystopian novel that challenges the limits of conformity from the perspective of an assimilating black character. That's my that's my thesis, okay? Um, because, you know, essay three description says that we are writing about themes, topics, what does the book address, all right? And so my book addresses uh, racism, all right? But from the perspective of a black character who is trying to assimilate into white culture, all right? He's trying to conform. And so it is an issue of race, but it's an issue about how race also affect, the racism of white people affects some black people into also adopting those racist ideas, okay? Which develops a lot of um, self-hate, all right? Now, I have, um, you know, I'm going to here in my outline list the, the main points I'm going to discuss in my body paragraphs, all right? I have a general thesis, but then I know I have very specific points I wanna make, okay? And so those specific points that, uh, I want to make are as follows. I have three so far, okay? 
each of these are going to be their own body paragraphs. This is help me, me helping myself to tell my <laughs> helping myself to tell myself uh, what I'm going to focus on in my body paragraphs. My first body paragraph is going to be about cultural assimilation. My second body paragraph is going to be about body dysmorphia. And my third paragraph is going to be about how black heritage is seen as the grotesque in my book. Okay. When I read the book, these are the things that stuck out to me. Okay. So when I go here to my outline, to my body paragraph outlines, I'm just going to. Um, oh, but before I go into that, I'm thinking about how, you know, I might want to quote here that kind of illustrates somewhat of what I'm already talking about. And so, you know, so when I was thinking about this book, it reminded me of another book that I read once. And uh, that deals with this. And so like in my, um, in my thesis, I use this term assimilating. And I realized that that term came from a book that I read called Stamped from the Beginning. And um, my reader might not know what that means. So I think it might be good for me to, to include a quote about assimilation. And so this, uh, let's see here. So like I read this book, Stamped, um, uh, Racism, Anti-Racism in You, okay? And um, I found this quote that I think will be really good in my, in my introduction. So I'm, I'm gonna include it here, okay? And it's, uh, I, I went ahead and included the, uh, for myself, since I'm writing this, I might was, I'll go ahead and, and include the citation so that way I know how to uh, properly, I already have it properly cited in my paper when I turn this outline into a paper, okay? Um, and so my, I have a quote here that says, both uh, segregationists and assimilationists, as I recall these racist positions in stamp from the beginning, think black people are to blame for racial inequality, or I'm sorry, inequity. Both the, segreg the segregationists and the assimilationists think there is something wrong with black people. And that's why black people are on the lower and dying end of racial inequality. The assimilations believe black people as a group can be changed for the better, and the segregationists do not. And so, you know, reading this book, I realized that my, that the main character, the narrator, he's a black man, but he's a, he is an assimilationist. He believes that black people are like, like himself are not, they're on the lower end. And so that he needs to assimilate into white culture. And the whole point of the book is about how he goes through a, essentially a, a um, race, a race change. He, he gets his skin changed and bleached to white. Okay, so uh, I want to include this quote because I think it helps to kind of explain my use of assimilating. Okay, I would include this in my introduction probably. And it is one of my sources. So that counts as one of my three. All right, so I've said that my three main points I'm going to discuss are cultural assimilation, body dysmorphia, and black heritage, heritage as the grotesque. So I'm going to go into outlining my first body paragraph, which is cultural simulation. So I'm, I'm gonna copy and paste this here, okay? And in my outline for each of my body paragraphs, for each of my body paragraphs, I want to pull a, a excerpt, like a quote or summarize apart from the story. And each body paragraph should have some sort of secondary source quoted in it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pull out this specific part of the story that I'm, I'm going to be referring to when I, when I, when I discuss cultural simulation. And I'm going to find a uh, thing about a, a quote that I would want to use from a secondary source in dealing with uh, this uh, paragraph. Okay. So my first body paragraph, cultural uh, assimilation, I'm going to use this uh, point from the story. Get rid of this. Uh... All right. So the unnamed narrator is ashamed of being born black. So he moves into a white neighborhood, marries a white woman, purposely dresses like an LL Bean model, which is a reference to white people, 
and is a lawyer at a law firm that it only has white executives. Okay. So I, I didn't have an exact quote that I wanted to use in the book. I, I instead I wanted to, to summarize main points that are mentioned in the book, all right, that all deal with his attempt to uh to a culture simulate. Oh, I put this in the wrong. It's up to right there. Boom. Okay. Now, in terms of a second source, secondary source to, to support this, okay. I am reminded of a book that I read called The Autobiography of Malcolm X, all right? And um, he talks a lot of, in one chapter about uh, the changing of, uh, of hair that a lot of black people did in the 30s. It's called uh, conking. And um, that just came from my own personal reading. When I was reading this book, I just thought about that. It reminded me of this previous book, okay? And so um, I went back and I found this quote from Malcolm X from his book, okay? So like you can use other books um, as secondary sources because you are relating them. You are saying how these two books discuss a very similar topic. Here's how another writer has, has mentioned, you know, or talked about the same thing. And I don't know why my copy and pasting is doing it like this. This is like super annoying. All right, so my secondary source is Malcolm X and Alex Haley from the uh, autobiography of Malcolm X, okay? And my quote is, how ridiculous I was, stupid enough to stand there simply lost in admiration of my hair now looking white, reflected in the mirror in Shorty's room. I vowed that I'd never again be without a conch and I never was for many years. This, is, this was my first really big step towards self-degradation. When I endured all that pain, literally burning my flesh to have it look like a white man's hair, I had joined the multitude of, of Negro men and women in America who are brainwashed into believing that the black people are inferior and white people superior, that they will even violate and, and mutilate their God-created bodies to try to look pretty by white standards. Okay, so this is a real long quote. I'm actually not going to use this entire quote in my paper. I'm all going to use snippets of it. But in my outline, I'll include the entire quote because I'll, I want to capture that entire quote in my paper, even if I'm not going to, it's not going to be quoted word for word. All right, I'll probably summarize some of it and just include maybe this last part. But for the outline, this quote can be really long, but for my actual paper, it's not going to be this actual long. Okay. All right, so now I have a, I have a secondary source and I have a pro, my primary source, okay? So now I'm gonna move to my next body paragraph, which is body dysmorphia. I wanna put this here, okay? And uh, I'm, I wanna go back to my, S, to my book and think about like, what would be a good um, excerpt from my book? And since I used a summary from the last, uh, for the last, for the previous paragraph, this time I'm, I'm actually going to use a uh, direct quote from the book. Uh, here we go. This is a direct quote. It says, I had almost forgotten about my demelanization. When I was undergoing the process at, per, at Personal Hill, I obsessed over my improving visage. It had taken several long months and each week after a transracial session, I would compare my retoned face in the mirror to the memory of my darker self fading to the grasslands of the past. Okay. And so body dysmor dysmorphia, this idea that he hates his body. Uh, he hates the blackness of his body. And so he wanted to um, change it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay, so um, I don't have necessarily another uh, direct secondary source for this one because I might feel like I just want to talk about this in general. Um, or I could take part of this quote from up here. And since this is such a long quote, okay, I could take some of this to, to use here also, because um, which is fine because I have an outside quote here. I have an outside quote here. And then in my next body paragraph, um, I have two outside sources that I'm gonna use that deal with 
the black heritage as the grotesque. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so for this um, paragraph, okay, I have this summary of the text. Oops. I have the summary about this um, this group, the ADZs, an Afrocentric terrorist group in the novel. Uh, they were Afghans. They wear. Oh, that's, that's messed up. Uh, they wear African American, uh, African style masks, and their members tend to have naturally long hair, dreads, and afros. Okay, and they're and they're seen as 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 villainy. All right, or villainous. That's probably better. Okay. And so I want to talk about in this paragraph that what the grotesque is and how it relates to racism. And then also um, I found this other quote. So I did some research and I found this article on Galileo about uh, the about the grotesque um, and racism. And then I also found this, let's see, I found an interview with uh the um author of the book that he gives uh about about um this group let's see um yeah it was on npr i have the address here so i found like i said this article i just did some uh general google research oh it's right here we cast in we cast a shadow the horrors are close to home and in this interview that is uh given um by um to to the to the writer let's see here that in reference to it, the uh the way that black people are are perceived okay he said it's a sad testament to our country's treatment of people of color that such developments don't seem all that implausible uh and by develop and like if i was going to be uh using this quote instead of developments because we don't know what these developments are since he's talking about is this is from a conversation that he was having so by developments, all right, here we have, um, you can use what's called a, these are brackets, and you can change a word to better clarify it, okay? And for here, in this case, he's talking about, in the article, uh, the development of, uh, of villainizing um, um, organizations that protest for uh, racial equality, or prote protest against uh, racism, such as the Black Lives Matter um, organization, and how even now we can see that the Black Lives Matter group, um, especially uh, with all the events that happened in um, in Oregon and different places, right, uh, that they are being accused of being the source of rioting, that they are anarchists, and that they're being villainized. Um, that their movement is being villainized, and that he sees that that it's uh, that throughout history, black social rights groups have often been uh, relabeled as as terrorists, as as um, as uh, nuisances, as criminal. Okay. So. And so he takes this villainization of black protest groups and he makes it into an extreme where, where they become actual, uh, in his book, they're perpetuated as being actual terrorists. But that's from the perspective of this black character who sees them that way. He's an unreliable narrator. 
Okay, so I would explain that in my in my in, if, in this paragraph. And I want to talk about the grotesque. So I found this. So once again, I found this other article on the grotesque. And um, I would cut, pull my quote out. Let's see here. Another secondary source. Is this that the grotesque is used to address a criticism toward white supremacy on black subordination. And the grotesque just means something that is seen as nasty and is, is feared all right, by society, even if it isn't really deserving of that. And so here it's like uh, it would apply because this black protest group has been villainized and seen grotesquely as this as this uh, terrorist organization. But that that relabeling them of, of the of calling them looters and terrorists and anarchists and all this is a result of the racism put onto them because they are black. So that's what I would argue based on this book that I read. Okay. And then conclusion would be something like the overall theme. Okay. Um, and so uh, like sort of like reduce it all down to one major focused idea. And so for this case, I would say something like assimilation is a type of accepted and conditional racism. And I would explain that in this paragraph. All right, so this would be my this would be my outline. I have my main topics, I have my thesis, I have my sources that I'm using, I have quotes, all right? I know what each body of paragraph is about. And uh, it would be really easy for me to then now attack my essay and start writing it piece by piece and just focus on one paragraph at a time in writing my um, rough draft, which I'll go over more of that also uh, next week about uh, turning your outline into an essay, okay? So what you should do for the next couple of days is focus on writing an outline. It's beneficial to you in the process of writing your essay, and it's beneficial to you because it'll be extra credit, okay? And you want to have plenty of, of references and quotes to the book itself and to outside sources, all right? Um, submit it online. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope this all made sense, okay? All right. Hey.